Hey there guys, Buddy here. So let's quickly touch on the main topics when it comes to sugarcane farming. So there are two main production areas when it comes to sugarcane. Right, firstly we're going to have KwaZulu Natal, especially along the coast. You know, especially from Mpangeni to about Port Jepston. The second production area would be Mpumalanga, right? Particularly the low felt region, so about near Nalspreit. And that's basically because these regions have the perfect conditions for growing sugarcane, right? They're going to have fertile soils, they're going to have high rainfall, and they're going to have warm temperatures, right? So let's first start off with the factors that are going to favor sugarcane farming in South Africa. So that basically means, what are the things that are going to help sugarcane grow well in South Africa? Firstly, we have climate. So sugarcane is going to require a warm, humid, subtropical climate. And that's because sugarcane is going to grow best in hot temperatures, right? Especially in areas with a lot of moisture in the air. Coastal areas of Kuzuna Natal and Pumalanga have high temperatures and summer rainfall, ideal for growth. So just like this point mentions, these areas are going to get plenty rain in summer and it's going to have warm temperatures all year round. And that's going to provide the perfect growing conditions for sugarcane. Remember, heat and moisture are going to help the sugarcane grow tall and strong. So sugarcane grows best in deep, well-drained, fertile soils rich in organic matter. And that's because if the soil is going to be too shallow, the roots are not going to be able to develop properly. The coastal lowlands provide loamy and alluvial soils suitable for sugarcane. So loamy soil is going to be a mix of sand, um, silt and also clay. And that's going to be perfect because that soil is going to be very soft, which will make it easy for the roots to grow. Thirdly, you need the availability of water. So sugarcane is going to require abundant irrigation in the drier months. Remember, sugarcane is a water intensive crop. That means that it's going to need a lot of water to grow. So this point is basically stating that farmers must supply extra water during the dry months in order to prevent the sugarcane from drying out and dying. Proximity to rivers and reliable rainfall supports consistent growth. Now, many sugarcane farms are going to be located near major rivers, or in areas with high rainfall. You then need flat or gently sloping land, which is going to be ideal for mechanized farming and harvesting. Because remember, machines are going to be used for planting and harvesting sugarcane. And these machines are going to work best on flat land. Flat land is going to reduce soil erosion and allow for efficient planting. Remember, if a slope is going to be gentle, that's going to prevent soil from being washed away, right, during your heavy rainfall periods. We then have transport infrastructure. So well-developed roads, railways and ports help transport sugarcane to mills and exports. Remember, sugarcane is going to be very bulky, right? So it needs to be processed quickly. So having these good uh, transport networks are going to allow it to be sent to factories before they end up uh, drying. So before it dries out. So another factor would be the close access to the port of Durban for international trade. So as we know, the Durban port is going to be one of Africa's busiest ports, right? And that's going to make it very easy for us to export this sugar to the global markets. So South Africa has established mills and processing facilities. So the availability of sugar mills nearby ensures that harvested cane is processed quickly. So like I mentioned in the previous point, Sugarcane is going to lose most of its sugar content the longer that it sits after it's cut, right? So that's why it's so important to have your mold close by so it can be crushed quickly and processed while it's still fresh. Having established molds is going to reduce your post-harvest losses and it's going to improve profitability. Because remember, less cane is going to be wasted, so that means that we're going to be making more money. And the last factor would be your skilled labor. So experienced farmers and workers in KwaZulu Natal and Mpumalanga provide knowledge of sugarcane cultivation and harvesting. So now let's take a look at the opposite, which would be factors that are going to hinder sugarcane farming. So basically, these are going to be the problems, the challenges or the obstacles that farmers are going to face when they're trying to grow the sugarcane. 
So the first factor that's going to hinder sugarcane farming in South Africa would be drought and water shortages. So sugarcane requires high amounts of water and droughts or insufficient irrigation can reduce yields. So in the beginning of the video, I did mention that sugarcane is going to be a water intensive crop. So that means that if there's going to be long dry periods, that's going to stunt its growth. And remember, if its growth is going to be stunted, that means that the amount that farmers are going to be able to harvest is going to be very low, which obviously means lower profits. Secondly, we can have pests and diseases. So infestations such as sugarcane aphids, borers and fungal diseases can damage crops. Now these pests are going to be feeding on the sugarcane, right? And that's going to damage the sugarcane. Also, they can spread infections. So there's also going to be a need for your costly pest and disease management. Remember, farmers are going to need to spray chemicals. They're going to need to monitor their fields. And all of that is going to cost money. So spending money to deal with these pests and diseases are all going to increase your production costs. Remember, increased production costs are going to lead to lower profits. Our third factor would be soil degradation. So continuous monoculture can lead to nutrient depletion, erosion and poor soil fertility, affecting productivity. So this basically means that if you're going to grow sugarcane on the same land year after year, it's going to drain the soil of all its nutrients, right? So you need to practice crop rotation, that means planting different crops in the same land. Because if you don't, then the land is going to be less productive and your yields are going to drop. Our fourth point will be climate risks. So floods, cyclones or irregular rainfall can damage your crops. Remember, if you have too much of water, that's going to wash away your young plants and that's going to flood your fields. Extreme temperatures or frost in some areas can reduce your yields. Now, sugarcane is going to be very sensitive to your cold, right? Your frost is going to burn the leaves and it's going to stop the growth. We then have your high production costs. So costs for fertilizers, irrigation, pesticides and mechanization are high. Now, once all these costs are going to add up, obviously, that's going to lead to a lower profit. We then have labor shortages. So seasonal harvesting requires large numbers of workers and labor shortages can delay harvesting. So this basically just means that the sugarcane needs to be harvested quickly, right? Once it's ready. And if you're not going to have any workers to harvest the sugarcane, that means that the quality of the cane is going to decline. We then have your competition from imports. So global sugar markets and imported sugar can reduce profitability for local farmers. So when you're going to import your cheaper sugar from other countries, that's going to make it harder for South African farmers to compete, right? And they're not going to be able to earn a stable income. So let's take a quick look at the contribution of sugarcane to the South African economy. Firstly, you're going to have your food production. So Sugarcane is processed into sugar, syrups and other products contributing to the country's food supply. So as we know, sugarcane is going to be the main source of sugar that's going to be used in all of our homes. Reduced reliance on imported sugar. Also, there's going to be a reduced reliance on imported sugar, right? So if South Africa is going to produce its own sugar, that means that we're not going to have to import sugar, right? And this is going to lead to us saving a lot of money. Secondly, you can have job creation, right? So it's going to provide direct employment in farming and harvesting. Remember, there's going to be a lot of workers needed to harvest this uh, sugarcane. Not only harvesting, but planting and maintaining it as well. It also supports indirect employment in sugar mills, transport and marketing. Thirdly, it's going to contribute to the GDP. So sugarcane farming and processing add to South Africa's gross domestic product through production, processing and export activities. So sugarcane is going to contribute billions of rands to the national economy, right? And that's going to be all the way from growing it, milling it to exporting it. Sugarcane is going to earn foreign exchange. So South Africa exports sugar and related products, earning valuable foreign currency. And that's basically just going to stabilize the economy. So we then have industrial development which is going to support related industries like sugar refineries, ethanol production and biofuel plants. Because remember with sugarcane, you don't only get sugar, right? Sugarcane is going to be used to produce ethanol as well. 
We then have infrastructure development, which is roads, irrigation systems and transport networks. So roads, irrigation systems and transport networks built for sugarcane farming benefit local communities. Now, in order to transport the sugarcane, obviously your roads are going to be developed and that's going to help the entire community. And lastly, we have your investment attraction. So, so large scale sugarcane farming attracts both local and foreign investors to agriculture and processing sectors. And what this is going to do is it's going to bring money into your rural areas. And obviously in doing so, it's going to help to grow your agricultural sector. Now, one last thing you need to know is the ideal growing conditions for sugarcane. So here's a table that's going to feature all of them. So that's more or less what you're going to need to know in terms of your sugarcane farming. Now, before I leave, here's a table that you can obviously go through on your own. It's just going to summarize the overall contribution of agriculture to the South African economy. And yeah, that's it from me for today, guys. All the best, blessings and much love to you all. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.